All right, here's the new Dodge Charger. This was a bit unexpected. Dare I say, I'm even slightly disappointed, but I don't know, please leave your thoughts below in the comment section regarding these new chargers, because throughout this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you everything you need to know regarding the 2024 Dodge Charger Daytona EV, along with the 2025 Charger six packs with the three liter twin turbo inline six hurricane engines. But before that, I gotta talk about the looks because that's what really made me a bit disappointed when they unveiled that concept charger, the SRT Banshee, whatever you wanna call it, that thing looked epic. It looked mean, it had a wide stance to it. It had some swagger. However, these production models, they look narrow, almost like a budget rental vehicle, like an SXT model or something. Yet these are not SXTs. What I'm showing you on the screen, these are the Daytona EVs and the six pack models. These are your performance variants and they just look so plain and they lost the character that the previous generation models had. And I was personally an owner of a brand new Challenger Scat Pack with the six speed manual transmission. It wasn't even the wide body, it was a skinny body, pretty much base model Scat Pack. And even that Challenger had so much swagger and presence out on the road and the wide bodies even more so. It was easily my most favorite looking muscle car. I love the Challengers and even the Chargers, you know, they look great too. But here for these new models, I don't know. I have kind of mixed emotions about it but please leave your thoughts below in the comment section regarding how these vehicles look. I will say the interior space is a massive upgrade and I will be getting to that in a little bit. And maybe I'm overreacting, perhaps in person, these cars will look better. And as you can see by the name, this is called the Dodge Charger and it's gonna be available with four doors and as a coupe under the same Dodge Charger nameplate. So there's no more Challenger. Both versions have a 121 inch wheelbase for the coupe and the sedan, which is one inch larger than the outgoing 2023 Charger. And the other thing to note, we have slightly less rear occupancy space, both with the legroom and the headroom for the coupe and the sedan. However, these new Chargers are hatchbacks. You have about 133% more cargo space than the outgoing Chargers. Now, this is both a pro and a con. One of the things that really made the outgoing Chargers and Challengers stand out was the amount of rear occupancy space. You had decent legroom and headroom when you sat behind either the Challenger or the Charger. So now we are sacrificing that with this new generation. The rear seat legroom is about three inches less now than before. But with that hatchback, we now have 38.5 cubic feet of storage space, especially when you drop the rear seats. And being that hatchback, you just have a taller loading space as well. So very practical when it comes to the trunk, but let me know in the comments how you feel about losing some of that rear occupant space. But physically, the new chargers are larger in just about every way compared to the previous models. And all wheel drive is gonna be made standard across the board. So let's finally get into some of the performance aspects of this new charger, starting with the EV, the Daytona, which is gonna be available sometime late summer of 2024, and this is gonna be a 2024 model year product. These Daytonas are gonna be available as a RT model and as a scat pack as of right now. They are gonna utilize a giant lithium ion Samsung battery pack. It's a 100.5 kilowatt hour battery pack unit, and the power outputs uh, it's interesting and a little bit confusing. So for these launch edition vehicles, we're gonna have more horsepower. So the RT is gonna have 496 horsepower with a stage one kit. That's gonna be 40 more horsepower than a standard RT because this is gonna be the launch edition, all right? Same thing for the Scat Pack. We're gonna have 670 horsepower with a stage two kit and that's gonna offer you 80 more horsepower than a standard EV scat pack. Again, just for the launch editions. And on the steering wheel, you're gonna be getting a power shot button, which adds 40 horsepower for 15 seconds, but they included this 40 horsepower in the horsepower figures. So technically a RT stage one launch edition is gonna have 456 horsepower 
and a launch edition stage two scat pack is gonna have 630 horsepower. Yeah, very confusing, but then again, this world loves confusion, right? <laughs> anyway, the RT, and I'm assuming these numbers are for the launch editions, it's gonna be doing zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds, quarter mile in 13.1 seconds. That's not that ballistic. And part of that is because these things are gonna weigh a lot, like 5,800 pounds, because it's got a massive EV lithium ion battery pack. So 5,800 pounds, that's 1,300 pounds more than the heaviest V8 2023 Dodge Charger. You know how everybody likes to call this thing a boat? Well, this is gonna weigh even more as an EV. Granted, those boat comments are a little bit unnecessary. Yes, the outgoing Charger and Challenger, they were a bit heavy. However, they performed just fine out on the street. Stellantis always nailed a good, comfortable ride along with decent handling characteristics for the street. Again, I'm emphasizing street. I'm not saying that a Challenger is gonna absolutely tear up a autocross event for the street for everyday handling. It was brilliant, it was predictable. You're not gonna crash it into a crowd of people like some of the competing products because you knew exactly what the Charger and Challenger were going to do. It was set up so perfectly and it was even relatively quiet. It was just a great touring performance product. And I'm sure these new Chargers will continue that, but as an EV, yeah, it's gonna weigh a lot. Anyway, the Scat Pack, EV is going to do 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds and 11.5 second quarter mile time. And as mentioned before, all wheel drive is standard for these EVs and the gas powered models, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But regarding the range, the RT is going to get 317 miles of range and the Scat Pack only 260 miles. So that's a shame. You have that massive battery pack and the range is pretty abysmal. Granted, that's most likely because this is a performance vehicle and maybe they're downplaying the numbers because they know people are gonna be flooring this and they're gonna drive it more aggressively. Perhaps that's why the range is so low, but that's just speculation, I don't know. That's your official range numbers from Stellantis. If you use a 350 kilowatt DC fast charger, you can go from 20 to 80% in under 28 minutes, which again, that's a long time. The Genesis products are able to do it in less than 20 minutes. And if you're using a level two charger, like the one that you install in your house, you can charge this thing again, 20 to 80% in five and a half hours. These EVs are going to have a R-wing design in the front and the air flows up through the grill opening and over the hood and the roof. So instead of a moon roof, these EVs are now gonna have a optional fixed full length glass panel, which is pretty cool. That's gonna be similar to the Lexus LC500. But again, that R-wing front design, that's only for the EVs, not for the gas powered chargers. Moving on to the 2025 chargers, which are called the six pack, believe it or not. I know this is a muscle car, but yeah, naming these things after, you know, your abdomen and, <laughs> you know, calling it a six pack, a bicep, glutes, quads. I mean, yeah, that's kind of a weird naming structure. Granted, I'm not a huge fan of their demonic naming schemes either, but six pack was kind of lame. Again, leave your thoughts below regarding that. But you're going to have a six pack HO high output and a SO, which is your standard output. So the high output charger is going to have 550 horsepower. Again, it's the same engine, a three liter twin turbo Hurricane inline six. And the standard output with the same engine, three liter twin turbo inline six is 420 horsepower. These two engines, the HO and the SO, they are replacing your RT and your Scat Pack in the gas powered lineup. So yeah, that's great. Those are some healthy numbers coming from that engine. However, the high output engine is apparently only available for the two door coupes. If you go with the four door charger, you're only gonna be able to get the standard output 420 horsepower engine and that's a bit unfortunate. They should give both the two door and the four door the option of the high output. Perhaps they'll do that in the future, but as of right now, they're not doing it. These engines are gonna be mated to an eight speed automatic and once again, all wheel drive is standard. They're essentially preparing you for full EV models. If people get accustomed to and used to 
these soulless, bland turbo engines with that relatively instantaneous torque, then the next logical progression is jumping into a full EV, right? With the true instantaneous torque and power and just overall better performance and even more refinement, right? Because that's what these turbo engines have to offer is their refinement. I mean, who knows? Because this is Stellantis, they might spice up these inline six engines. You might get some more blow off sounds and a little bit more character than let's say a B58 inline six from BMW. But again, we'll have to see. Clearly these engines will never have the same character of the 5.7 liter and the 6.4 liter Hemi V8s. But you can get massive Brembo brakes, six pistons in the front and four pistons in the back. They're mainly claiming this for the Daytona, but I'm sure the inline six models can get this same setup. So that's a huge and proper braking system. And when you go with the track pack option, you're gonna get 20 inch wheels with a staggered tire setup, 305s in the front and 325s in the rear. So it's the widest tire setup possible. Regarding the suspension, the Charger is gonna have a multi-link front suspension that's gonna deliver increased performance and cornering with stiffness from a forged aluminum links that helps in the durability and the dynamic slash handling performance. We have a fully independent rear suspension. It's gonna be a four link suspension geometry that increases body control during high speed cornering. And optional on the Charger Daytona Scat Pack, the EV with the track package, you can get adaptive damping suspension, which uses dual valves, one for compression and for the rebound. And we're gonna have uh, various drive modes that you can play with and some unique ones such as a donut mode, a drift mode, line lock, race prep, launch control, and even a drag mode as well. I mean straight line performance is not going to be an issue with any of these new chargers. But finally let's go ahead and talk about this interior space because it is a massive upgrade. Granted the outgoing charger and challenger they had big, comfy leather seats. The infotainment worked. The gauge clusters, that looked good. And the steering wheel felt proper as well. So everything you interacted with regarding the outgoing chargers and challengers felt nice. However, the design was bland. It looked generic, like a rental car interior space, but it was functional. Now it looks way more premium and upscale. I like the layout. We have a kind of a square steering wheel setup similar to the C8 Corvette and we have a full digital gauge cluster here either a 10.25 inch or a 16 inch optional digital gauge cluster. It's going to depend on which model you go with. And regarding your infotainment, we have a 12.3 inch display with Uconnect 5. It's a Android based operating system. You can also get a optional heads up display. You also have 64 ambient lighting colors that you can choose from. You got yourself a wireless charging pad and various little packages you can choose from like a carbon and suede package, a sun and sound package. Standard, these vehicles are gonna get a nine speaker Alpine unit with 506 watts along with a subwoofer. The higher models are gonna get an 18 speaker 914 watt Alpine system, once again, with the subwoofer. I appreciate the new textures. Uh, the seats look good. We have a pistol grip shifter. That's awesome. And yeah, it seems like a nice, big, airy cabin. I'm sure the touch points are gonna be far superior. And we have plenty of safety tech and you can get blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert as standard, along with your forward collision warning, active lane management, etc. And optionally, you can get a 360 camera and other optional safety features as well. Another thing, hopefully the crash test results have been improved here because the outgoing Charger and Challenger, it's not that great. And when you go with those EVs, you're still gonna get that frat zonic electronic exhaust system, which uses speakers and airflow through tuned chambers to recreate a simulated muscle car engine sound. And they have a patent on this that is unique you know, no other EV is trying to simulate muscle car sounds and they're saying it's gonna be as loud as a Hellcat engine, but it's not gonna sound anywhere near as good as a Hellcat. However, hopefully they're gonna retune it and recalibrate it to sound a lot better because when we heard it on the concept vehicle, the SRT Banshee or whatever, it sounded like total trash. Hopefully they improve that frat zonic electronic exhaust for the production vehicles. Anyway, that's everything you need to know about the new 
2024 and 2025 Dodge Chargers. Let me know in the comment section how you feel about these vehicles. Again, we don't have pricing, but as long as it's well incentivized and you have great leasing programs, the MSRP really won't matter as much. As long as they make these things obtainable, I guess most people, we're not gonna care how it looks or any of that stuff. It's still a relatively cool car. And if it's affordable and it fits in most people's budgets, I think people are gonna be clamoring for this, much like how uh, in the early days when the 2015 Chargers and Challengers got refreshed, up until 2019, we had great lease deals on those. Everyone and their mother was leasing a Charger or a Challenger. But we'll see what they do here with these new models. The sad thing is people are just accustomed to buying vehicles at high prices. People are used to getting bad deals when it comes to cars, and that just screws it up for the rest of the people who actually negotiate and actually are savvy enough to find good deals and incentives. One great resource I'm gonna share with you is a free leasing calculator provided to you by Auto Companion. Leasing programs change every month and this calculator will update every month and it shows you the interest rate on the lease along with the residual values and the incentives you can qualify for in your local area. That's a really powerful tool because now the dealership can't play games with you. Whether you're leasing or financing or paying cash, it's good to know about the incentives and really that transparency now you have all the numbers at your disposal to compare and contrast and see what's going to work best for your budget so hopefully you use that tool to your advantage and if you appreciate these resources consider liking and subscribing but thank you so much for watching this video take care and goodbye